Yo, what's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, boy. We live in this piece. Yeah, boy. Wait for some more people to show up. We'll start in five minutes. going on fellas Start in five minutes. Start in five minutes. Oh, there's some more people getting here. Yo, PE1, Keto Johnson, what's up? What is up? It's going to be a great one tonight. I promise you it's going to be a great one. Because people been talking about child support is unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Child support is unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. bitch. <laughs> Man, please. I ain't gonna call nobody no bitch. You know what I mean? But uh if you got a woman out here, what's up, Felipe? If you got a woman out here not reading what she's quoting, okay? You talk in my Caucasian voice. You know, because a lot of niggas don't like the real shit. They want you to sound proper. And the people that's Sounds so goddamn proper. Them one they be the ones to scam your ass. Right? When y'all see this shit, how motherfuckers be lying and stop taking people's shit, passing on because somebody said and they don't present the case, they don't read you the case. We're gonna go through this damn case tonight. Homebird versus homebird, child support declared unconstitutional. Okay. 
Well, let's start. We can go on with these four people. Thank you for showing up, fellas. And uh, while people coming in, slowly coming in, they're going to have to start over, right? First come, first serve, okay? Now, we reserve all our rights, wave none. We're not anti-government. Y'all know this. Y'all know what y'all know where I'm coming from. We run this child support shit. We ain't giving it back. We don't do no legal advice. Okay. Y'all ready to read this case and see is child support unconstitutional? Let me let her tell y'all. Okay. Hold on just a second. Hold on just a second. Oh, bruh. People don't read, man. That's 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 what's bad. Let me know. Let me know y'all can see this on the screen. I like this lawyer over here. He says, get the state to drop the child support case against you. He didn't say your child support case, did he? He said it dropped to drop the child support case against you. Haven't we been saying that since day one? It's not your case. None of this is your business, okay? And they make it your business. Anyway, if they force you into business, if they force you into contract, okay? Can't nobody force you into a contract. Now, let's see what she says. Y'all remember this? We're going to read the case. She didn't put up no case law, none of that. Listen to her. Let me turn up this volume, pump up the volume. And another good one for you. Child support was declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. What Supreme Court, lady? Huh? Not the United States Supreme Court. Supreme Court decisions are a judge's Achilles heel. It is their death knell. When you find Supreme Court decisions supporting your case, it's a wrap. Okay, let me read it to you. It's delicious. Okay. It's delicious. It's delicious. <laughs> Child support declared unconstitutional by Supreme Court. What Supreme Court? Child support was declared unconstitutional in a Minnesota Supreme Court ruling for violating the separation of powers required by the Minnesota Constitution in Article 3, Section 1. Further. Okay. She just said it's violated. What? Let's go back. What she said. Violated the what? The powers required by the Minnesota Constitution in Article 3, Section 1. Further, child support agencies actions are also unconstitutional due to lack of probable cause you don't even that didn't make no sense right unconstitutional i didn't know programs was unconstitutional programs cannot be unconstitutional and it's still operating today if child support was unconstitutional why is she still going today fellas that's the number one thing you should be saying in your head, right? See, she don't talk about the bitch who done this to you. She not going to go against the bitch grain because all these bitches stick to fucking gather. She ain't called out not one bitch. She ain't said, that bitch put y'all on child support. I'm here to defend y'all from this bitch. Fine case law. Just quote everything that I just said. Put that in a notice and send that to the clerk of court. You better not do that bullshit. Don't send no notice. Put what the fuck she said. She gonna dig your ass deep in the motherfucking hole. Okay? Y'all follow me? Y'all follow me? Shit, she talking about something delicious like she finna suck some cock. Let me pull up the case for y'all. Some dude sent me this in the email. And he don't realize that he didn't realize who he was sending this in the email to. Okay. Let me present the evidence. Let 
Now, here's the case. Some dude sent me this in my email and said, tell me you working for the government without telling me you work for the government, right? Fellas, you know I don't work for no goddamn government. I told you to go after the bitch. And then if the agency still want to fuck with you and commingle with the bitch, you go after the bitch and the agency, right? Because they breaking the law. You, They can't sign you up for shit. This is the opinion. Opinion, okay? Not a judgment, but a fucking opinion, my nigga. Let's get with it. The court of appeals rule the administrative process unconstitutional. It didn't say the child support was unconstitutional. They said the administrative process was unconstitutional. Learn how to comprehend. Relying on the separation of powers doctrine, we affirm that the court of appeals and hold that the administrative process is unconstitutional. A process. What process are we talking about? Huh? What process? That's what you should ask. What process are they talking about this unconstitutional? What constitutional right did they violate of yours? They said the administrative process, the way they process this shit to you. Right? He sent me this shit. Like, why this man gonna send me this shit like I'm dumb and I can't fucking read? It didn't say child support is unconstitutional, fellas. It did not say that. You say it's blurry? Hold on. The Court of Appeals ruled the administrative process unconstitutional, not child support. The process. Relying on the separation of powers doctrine. We affirm that the Court of Appeals and hold that the administrative process is unconstitutional. Let me stop sharing that. Fellas, these people don't read these cases. They just start running out the mouth and shit. You got to read your cases. You got to do your fucking homework. You can't run around here just saying shit. You're going to looking, you're gonna start looking stupid and you're going to get called out. Right? He underlined all this shit. And I underlined some, I circled something for him. Okay? It says the separation of power doctrine is based on the principle that when the government power is concentrated in one of its branches, tyranny and corruption will result. Okay, cool. Increased of you of uh use of administrative agencies has further blurred boundaries between the government branches. Let me let me blow it up a little bit more. Hold on. Let me blow it up a little bit more. Man, this is good, man. Check this out. What does this say? The, the district court asked the legislator, legislator may establish. Who are legislators of your state? Nigga lawyers. It's a business. Okay? It's a fucking business. And look at this. In determining if the original jurisdiction of the courts is being usurped, we look at the origins of the rights and relief equitable or statutory and agency overseas. Yes, child support is equity. Yeah, it's equity. But it's not your equity, nigga. It's the bitch and the state shit. Now, let me start. Let me go to the case. Let's go and get down to it. Let me get to the freaking case. And remember what she said. She had all them dudes over there hyped up. Child support is unconstitutional. No, nah, baby. No, nah, that ain't how it go. Check this out. Holmberg versus Holmberg warning and yellow. That ain't good. When it's blank, it's the case is good, fellas. When you don't have the red or the yellow, that yellow means hold up. 
cited in contradiction by Moline versus Moline in, in Ray Marriage of Moline, Nelson versus Nelson. Right? And this was in the Supreme Court of Minnesota, not the United States Supreme Court, nigga. The administrative process was held unconstitutional in Minnesota, not the child support, my nigga. Why would they give up their money to stop harassing these a lot of these pussy ass niggas out here who don't want to read, who don't want to fight, who don't want to do nothing? Who don't want to talk about the bitch who got them in this predicament? Now we're gonna go all the way down. Okay. You ready for this? This is the opinion. Check this out. Here go the key passage of this. The statute requires the court to award attorney fees if the fees are necessary to allow a party to continue in action bought in good faith. The party from whom fees are requested has the means to pay the fees and the party seeking fees cannot pay the fees. This shit is all equity, my nigga. Really, this shit was about motherfucking attorney fees. The motherfucker didn't like the attorney fees. See, motherfuckers don't read this shit, man. The judgment, check this out. The judgment of the Court of Appeals is affirmed. The judgment shall be effective upon entry as to the parties before us. With respect to other parties and cases, the judgment shall not be effective and the administrative child support process shall remain in place until July 1st, 1999. Let me read that again for you. With respect to other parties and cases, the judgment shall not be effective and the administrative child support shall remain in place until July 1st, 1999. This delay will give the legislator an opportunity to modify the system, modify means like if you modify your car, you can't modify no child support. I don't know why niggas go on court and do that stupid ass shit. So this is their system. They're going to modify consistent with this decision. They're going to modify it. So what they're meaning is they're going to modify it to come up with a new scheme to make that shit legal. They're going to make sure they send your ass a notice. They hope you default all that shit. They're going to hit your ass in your email. You know what I'm talking about? That's all they fucking doing. Because look at the beginning of this case. Okay. The instant case is consolidation of three appeals to the Court of Appeals challenging the constitutionality of Minnesota's administrative child support process. The appeals, this appeals presents the issue of whether the administrative process, right, violates the separation of powers doctrine by in, in, uh, implementing upon the original jurisdiction of the district court by creating a tribunal which is not inferior to district court by permitting child support officers to engage in the practice of law. The Court of Appeals ruled that the administrative process unconstitutional. It didn't say child support was unconstitutional. Relying on the separation of powers doctrine, reaffirmed that the Court of Appeals hold that the administrative process is unconstitutional and believe it violates the separation of powers. There it is. Right? Right now, let's go back to the video. Mention in Article Three, Section One. Further, child support agencies' actions are also unconstitutional due to lack of probable cause. You don't even have to find case law. Just quote everything that I just said. You have to find case law. Put that in a notice and send that to the clerk of court. 
And did they give you a description of what process in this case was unconstitutional? And notate your case number if it's in the court or send it to the child support agency with your case number with the child support agency or the court. It's a wrap. Mm -mm, it's a thing of beauty. But yes, you can learn how to legally close your own child support case by holding the child support agency accountable to their own laws. No, it ain't your case. See what this dude said over here? Child support case against you. Okay? Remember that. It's just that simple, y'all. Go to my website. It's ameliasutton.com. Please remember to do all of the button things. I'm giving you all of this great knowledge, free tips, and this is your way to support me. And it encourages me to keep coming back and doing. Article three. Distribution of powers of government. Division of powers. The powers of government shall be divided into three district de distinct departments, legislative, executive, and judicial. No person or persons belonging to or constituting one of these departments shall exercise any of the powers properly belonging to either of the others except in the instances expressly provided in this constitution. Okay. Right? Now, what y'all think? Tell me what y'all think in the chat. Timely and equitable distribution of family financial resources is needed to protect our children's well-being thus the efficient administration of child support cases is a laughable goal i mean a laudable, laudable goal and one that all three branches of government share to this end the legislator has created an expedited administrative process to adjudicate child support cases involving families receiving certain types of public assistance did it say public loan no nigga it said public assistance they assisting you. If they didn't tell that bitch it was alone and they didn't tell you it was alone and they forced you into that shit, nigga, that's unconstitutional, but you got to find your remedy. You got to find, you got to find your remedy, unconstitutional remedy that they done to you. While evidence of an administrative child support process efficiency is hotly disputed by the parties, there is no controversy about the importance of streamlining child support mechanisms. Nonetheless, the importance of this shared goal cannot ignore separation of power constraints. The child support process is an outgrowth of Minnesota's response to legislature enacted by government. I mean, Congress, excuse me. When modifying public consistent laws in 1984, Congress mandated the states create expedited administrative and judicial proceedings for procuring modifying and enforcing child support orders for people receiving public assistance or seeking government help enforcing child support orders. While all Minnesota counties initially were exempt from certain federal mandates, the state decided to improve child support enforcement efforts to establish a pilot program. Y'all see that? In January, we're going to read this whole fucking case. And I'm going to show y'all. Y'all have to read these cases before people start quoting this shit. In January 1988, began an administrative hearing pilot program, Dakota County, under the pilot program. Administrative law judges, a.k.a. lawyers from the Office of Administrative Hearings, presided over hearings related to child support issues. See, they even tell you that it's an administrative hearing, not a judicial hearing. Issues when the Dakota County Human Services Department, and it's a service. 
either was a party or represented a party to a nation. So check this out. Look at the language. Party. Party. Do it say claiming or defendant? They switched the words in some people's cases as responded. Right? To an to the action. While AL, ALJs were empowered to make findings of fact, conclusions of law, and recommendations, you, you got to rebut all this shit. They don't have no fact. And they don't have facts in this case. The only fact that they said they want you to pay for this bitch to lay on her back and get fucked. Only the chief of AL, ALJ or his designee could render final decisions and orders. Did it say final judgments? No, it said final decisions. So who the fuck going to make a decision for you? You are, you fellas, you're an adult. You can make decisions for yourself for not letting nobody order you around because you didn't sign nothing. Most, a lot of niggas didn't sign anything, okay? Some niggas, some niggas got judgments because they let that shit linger. They didn't write back, you know what I mean? They let the, uh, the time go back from challenging the judgment, right? Don't do that. Final orders, ain't no such thing as a final order, such thing as a final judgment. Final orders were treated like final agency decisions, appealable, because if it's final, how can you appeal it? Didn't it just say that? To the court of appeals by Shishori and were enforceable by the contempt powers of the county or the district courts. Statutes enabling language also authorize non-attorney Dakota County employees acting under the supervision of the county attorney to prepare, sign, serve, file motions for obtaining, modifying, and enforcing child support in a medical... Hold on, somebody hit me up. Okay, hold on. From medical support orders and maintenance and relating documents we're gonna read this shit one more time fellas we're gonna read this shit the statutes enabling language also authorized non-attorney dakota county employees acting under the supervision of the attorneys to prepare sign and i'm gonna tell you something a lot of these orders are signed by fucking lawyers nigga not judges when you look on your IWO, what's on there? The employee of the motherfucking agency. Am I lying? Employees can't, find, can't sign judgments. Only judges sign judgments. Let me see y'all follow me. Y'all follow me? Are y'all following me? A lot of niggas got caught up because they didn't know nothing about going to check the record and these lawyers signed all these orders and these employees. And you can challenge them and beat that shit. That shit is easy to fucking beat. It's not hard. Go find the laws, put it in their ass. They want to be disobedient about the law. Hey, you got the right after five o'clock to whoop their ass. Notice all the proper people. These employees called child support officers could also appear at pre-hearing conferences and participate in the proceeding before in it's all conflict of interest, like Cody said. What my what my dude there, Cody? Where he said that at? It's a conflict of interest, fellas. People going to court. If you're going to play this court game with these people, you better know your shit. Don't go in there arguing the wrong fucking shit. Because you got people out here right now arguing the wrong shit. Talking about they've been deprived and all this old shit. You can't be deprived when you've been noticed and then you appear and you show up. 
You can't say that. For the next few years, the administrative hearing process underwent annual modification and expansion. In 1989, both based both on the success of uh, Dakota's county pilot program and the withdrawal of exemptions from 16 counties by the federal government, the legislature expanded the reach of administrative hearings. The commissioner of human health services was authorized to designate. See, they're giving y'all the game right here, man. The commissioner, nigga. The commissioner, who has commissioners? NFL has commissioners. MLB has a commissioner. NBA has a commissioner. NH, uh, 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 the Hockey League has commissioners, right? The Little League has a commissioner. That ain't no fucking judge, nigga. And then they say the human health services, and they doing unhuman Breaking all type of human rights? Huh? Why ain't nobody challenging these people with human rights? Was authorized to designate counties to implement the administrative program. All and an AL. J's were empowered to hear uncontested parentage cases and issue final decisions without review by the chief ALJ. Don't they do that all the time? And they all became appealable, right? So guess what, fellas? You can take their ass to federal court. You can take them to federal court. Because they're orders. They're not judgments. They're orders, not judgments. You can sue them in federal court for orders. You want to know why? Because they keep modifying. It's not set. Y'all need to learn how to read between the fucking lines. In 1995, the legislature required all counties to create administrative child support processes to resolve child support matters involving the public authority. Matters are tracked as either uncontested or contested proceedings. In uncontested proceedings, which either party can elect to bypass, parties are given 30 days to respond. Now, how and how many people respond in 30 days when somebody writes y'all? Be honest, how many of y'all do that? How many of y'all do that? See, they telling people in this case, in this case law, in this case, you know what I mean? They give you game through these cases, man. I can comprehend because I gave up my party in time to read and study law. I gave up all my 30s. I gave up the end of my 20s and all my 30s to do this shit, nigga. Respond to the public authorities, written notice, requesting information to prepare for a child support order. Now, this how you this how they get your ass. When you be willing to fool fool to submit all your, your uh bank accounts, how much you made, and all that, then guess what? You just incriminated yourself, they got you. It's all voluntary because they ain't put no gun to your head and tell you to bring that shit up here. Did they or did they? And now if they threaten you to sign, you got their ass. A lot of niggas let this shit bypass because they don't remember what went on. They just went on with the, with the dumb ass and told them, man, you got to pay child support. Most of your kin folks telling you that dumb ass shit. Man, you got to pay child. Pay them people their money and all that. Man, cut them motherfuckers off. Cut any kin folks that tell you you got to pay child support. Cut them bitches off. 
Because they'll snitch on you and turn you in, nigga. If you got any friends that'll tell you that, so-called friends that tell you some shit like that, that ain't your friend. Shit. The public authority then prepares a proposed order for the party's signature. You see this shit? The public authority then prepares a proposed order for the party's signatures. Did they prepare this for your signature? Huh? And the ALGJ's ratification. Either party can test the order. If either party can test the order, the case moves into a contested hearing process. You can contest these child support orders. The contested hearing process is similar to the pilot program described above. CS draws up pleadings in the peer hearing at and appear adherence without the oversight of a county attorney. Let me tell y'all about special appearances. A special appearance is a general appearance. You gonna show up. They just put that in there to make get your ass in there. It's like bait on the hook. They bait your ass in there to step on you and make you accept the raw fucking, except you paying for her to go fuck. It ain't nothing special. There ain't no get off a child support free card, nigga. That's a trap, nigga. That's a setup. They made these rules up. You didn't. While CSO may seek out county attorneys with questions, the statute bars county attorneys from playing an active role in the review of information, the preparation of a default and contested orders, and the contested hearings unless the non- Attorney employee of the public authority requests the appearance of the county attorney. Nigga, this all this shit is conflict of interest, nigga. Down to the employee, down to the goddamn janitor at the building, nigga. Everybody at that child support building to cleaning that bitch that you had a baby by, nigga, they your enemies, nigga. Shalom, Brother Carlos, Smokey, Cornelius, everybody, P1, Cody. Thank you, Cody, GT, thank you. Thank you. An administrator, hold on. Let's read the Minnesota statutes. Although Minnesota statutes was further amended, see, they be changing this shit, bro. That's how you're not a part of that shit. And in, in the administrative hearings, ALJs have all powers, duties, and responsibilities conferred on judges and district court to attain and enforce child and medical support and parentage and maintenance obligations. Contract. Obligations means contract. What did you sign? Did you sign up for all this shit? No, the bitch did. She waived all her rights. You did not. So that's why they bring your ass in there so you can waive yours too. You ought to go in that motherfucker. If you're going to go to court, go defensive. Go agitated, nigga. Don't go in there nice. That's what you want you. They got people on YouTube telling you go in there nice. You can't play with these people. These, these people ain't shit, nigga. They want you to be a pussy in there. But it's funny, niggas attack each other on the street, won't stick together and get rid of this shit. That's some funny shit. Niggas will go against me. I done defeated two bitches. So I'm exempt. Should no nigga be mad as sham stoppers? Nobody on the face of this fucking planet. Because we you know why? We didn't take your information and give it to the fucking enemy. We didn't put you on child support. We here to put you on some fucking game, nigga. We ain't put you on child support. We here to put your ass on some game. You being played with. You being fondled. You, you being fondled. You know what I mean? Including the power to issue subpoenas, conduct proceedings according to the administrative rules and district court rules, and issue warrants for failure to appear. 
Now this one right here gets this one right here. Fail, it's falling off the map. Failure to appear. This shit right here is so easy to be. Issue warrants for failure to appear. Nigga, that got federal. Look, this got this right here got federal court case written all over this shit. In addition, ALJs may modify child support orders, even those granted by district courts. While ALJs cannot preside over contested proceedings and contempt proceedings, they can grant stipulated contempt orders and uncontested parentage orders if custody and visitation are also uncontested. Fellas, they got Supreme Court cases right now. Can't nobody interfere with your parental rights, nigga. You got the right to go upside these motherfuckers' heads. Quit being nice. You know what I mean? Quit being fucking nice and determine that the administrative court process was unconstitutional. Court appeals rely. See, there it is right there, fellas. It says the process was unconstitutional. It didn't say child support program was. So you got this woman right here. And this was for fair use. Another good one for you. Child support was declared unconstitutional by the Supreme Court. Supreme Court decisions are a judge's Achilles heel. It is their death knell. When you find Supreme Court decisions supporting your case, it's a wrap. Okay, let me read it to you. It's delicious. Okay, child support was declared unconstitutional in a Minnesota Supreme Court ruling for violating the separation of powers required by the Minnesota Constitution in Article 3, Section 1. Further, child support agencies actions are also unconstitutional due to lack of probable cause you don't even have to find case law just quote everything that i just said put that in a notice and tell us this shit don't even apply to you they can't force a contract on nobody and you have the right to knock somebody out facts bars facts did y'all hear what facts of freedom just said you got the right to go if you don't want to play this court shit and the goddamn legal shit if you want to use your brain your common sense you got the right to knock they motherfucking ass out for fooling you niggas gonna niggas on here they gonna sit up here and try to play court with these motherfuckers And they don't even have the correct paperwork to beat these people. Separation of powers, Dr. The court appeals first posited the executive branch is not to interfere with the course of the exercise judicial power. That's how they get stupid people. Right? That's how they get stupid people, man. That's all I'm going to say. As L ALJs are empowered to modify child support and maintenance orders originating in district court, the Court of Appeals stated that the administrative process placed ALJs in the constitutional untenable position of reviewing and modifying judicial decisions. What y'all think, man? Huh? What y'all think? Child support is constitutional because it's still going. Child support is the biggest constitutional. Child support is constitutional, right? You want to know why it's constitutional? Because they contract with that bitch of yours.
until you got common sense and say, hey, man, I don't want a contract with y'all. And they force you into it. You got the right to beat their ass. You got the right to fuck them up. Real talk. Give me the case law right here. Ain't no more reading this shit. This shit is all about money, man. This shit is all about that bitch of yours you had a baby by don't want to work. She don't want to work. She don't want to take care of your... She think that you owe her for being a fucking position that she was born to fucking do. Y'all, people have heard this time after time, again and again, over and over. I, we can't stress it enough. Can't nobody force y'all to do business with them. Child support is a service, a.k.a. program, right? And you have to find your remedy with the fuck they did to you. It's just that fucking simple. If you didn't sign nothing, kudos. If you didn't say nothing, you let the shit linger, you got a fight on your hand. When somebody come with something, time out you owe them some money, you need to hurry up, eradicate that shit. You need to check that shit. And a lot of these dudes is killing these hoes out here. Do you blame them? They're not killing them for nothing. These hoes is threatening these niggas to take these niggas through hell and take their money. These bitches weaponize this shit. Shit. Real talk. PE1 says, sue everyone involved that helped your BM. Correct. They forcing a contract on you. Real talk. They are forcing a contract on you. Now, let's see these other cases, what they're talking about. Cited cases. It says cited in contradiction. Let's, let's see what they're talking about in here. Look at this, unpublished opinion. In this appeal from the district court's denial of husband's motion to terminate spouse maintenance, husband argues that the district court erred by ruling on his motion without an evidentiary hearing, abused its discretion by denying his motion and abused its discretion by awarding attorney fees to wife. We affirm. Facts. Appellant Daniel Robert Mal Maline, husband, responded, Mary Elizabeth Malign wife dissolved their 28 year marriage in July 20. Let me tell y'all something about dissolution of marriage. Ain't nobody supposed to be getting paid for dissolution. He must have signed some shit. The party stipulated the terms of the dissolution judgment and decree. See, I, the, the party stipulated to the terms of the disillusion judgment and decree under which the husband agreed to pay dumbass nigga what the fuck i tell y'all who in their right mind gonna get this bitch sixty seven hundred dollars a month nigga how you gonna cry and sue the bitch and you agreed to pay the bitch 
when you go in these courts, you sign that shit, they're gonna hold you up to this saying. It's a saying that they have. Um, you're gonna be a man of your fucking word, nigga. Sixty-seven, six thousand seven hundred and fifty dicks per month in spousal maintenance to wife. At the time of the divorce, wife had gross income of approximately twenty-one thousand. You, that's why you don't marry poor bitches. That's why I don't talk to these old poor ass hoes, nigga. You run like hell when you give to a poor bitch. Because you'll be in court like this fool. She must have some good ass pussy or some good head or something to pay her 60 Man, monthly expenses, 7000 Husband had the gross income of approximately 190000 per year working as an attorney for travelers. They got to pay child support, fellas. That's what his dumb ass get. Look at this shit. Let me go to the decision. The decision. The district court did not err as a matter of law by declining to conduct an evidentiary hearing on husband motion. Now, he a lawyer and they knocked down his fucking motion, nigga. Did, oh, man. Y'all don't understand what I'm showing y'all? I ain't gonna say nothing else. Y'all figure it out. But y'all know right now that what this woman is spewing, they talking about the administrative process is unconstitutional, not child support. Okay? We just debunked that shit. We're going to do some more cases. Okay? A waiver of evidentiary hearing should be made clear from the record. Thompson versus Thompson. Why a district court is not required to conduct the evidentiary hearing on a motion to modify or terminate spousal maintenance, husband and wife stipulate that the district court would conduct an inventory, it, inventory hearing upon a motion to modify or terminate spousal maintenance. Husband contends that he did not voluntarily waive his rights to an evidentiary hearing. Yeah, you did, nigga, because you signed to agree that shit, dude. You attorney, you should know that, nigga. Dumbass. And a lot of these attorneys don't know the law. They know a little bit of procedural. The record indicates that the husband waived that husband waived the hearing. The district court scheduled an evidentiary hearing after the husband filed his motion. Counsel for husband appeared, but Husband did not. Wife attorney informed the district court that in lieu of continuing this matter out for the evidentiary hearing, the council is going to submit proposed to find as a district court. When you play these games, fellas, when you play this court game and they ask you to appear, you better appear. Because a lot of niggas want to be right. When you, when you play the court game, you want to be right. But if you want to do it our way, that means you want to be happy. What's up? And the only way you appear at every hearing is when they suing they when you suing they motherfucking ass. But if you asking these people to modify this and do this, you're gonna to have to go to court. Let's go to another case. Go to another case. Nelson versus Nelson. Oh, it already went to the facts. The main issue is pure evaluation and allocation of two businesses that were determined by marital property. The appellate also challenged the district court award of attorney fees. This shit was really about attorney fees. That Minnesota Supreme Court shit, Holmberg versus Holmberg, was really about attorney fees.
because that's all they talk about in all these cases was attorney fees. Let me go back to another one. Now let's read the uh let me read the Washington McCarter. Hold on. Let me go to another one, fella. This is 2013. Appellate argues that the district court early warning responded. $9,100 need for a base attorney fees. Come on, man. And they put the case right here. They put the case right here. Come on, fellas. Hold on, let me show y'all something. Blessings versus Freestone. Negative treatment. Are y'all still with me? Y'all not going to sleep, are y'all still with me? Negative treatment. Remember I did that podcast on it? Overruled by Armstrong versus Exceptional Child something, Inc. Freestone was what? Overruled by what? Let's go to the case in 2015. Supreme Court of the United States, right? Justice Scalia delivered the opinion of the court, right? Which we consider whether Medicaid providers can sue to enforce the Medicaid Act. Medicaid is a federal program that subsidizes the state's provision of medical services to families with dependent children of age of blind or disabled individuals whose income and resources are sufficient to meet the cost of the necessary medical services. Like other spending clause of legislation, Medicaid offers the state offers the states a bargain. Come on, man. Hold on, let me go to these these things right here. Wait a minute. Cited 50 times, key passage. Let me go to the key passages. If the supremacy clause includes a private right of action, the Constitution requires Congress to permit to enforce its laws by private actors, significantly curtailing the ability to guide the implementation of federal law. It would be strange indeed to give abuse, to give a clause that makes federal law supreme and reading its limits, Congress power to enforce that law by imposing mandatory private enforcement, a limitation unheard of with regard to the state, to state legislators. As we have long recognized, if an individual claims federal law emphasizes him from state regulation, the court may issue an injunction upon finding the state regulatory actions preempted. To say that the supremacy clause does not confer a right of action is not to diminish the significant role that the courts play in assuring that the supremacy clause of the federal federal law force one once a case or controversy probably comes before a court judges are bound by federal law it says judges are bound by federal law thus a court may not convict a criminal defendant of violating a state law that criminal law prohibits similarly a court may not hold a civil defendant liable under state law for a conduct federal law requires The power of federal courts of equity to enjoin unlawful execution actions is subject to express and imply statutory limitations. Courts of equity can no more disregard statutory constitutional requirements and provisions than 
than can courts of law. Hold on, let me go to some more shit. Wait a minute. Hold up, fellas. Let me tell y'all something. Y'all ready for this? Donald Trump told niggas long time ago before he got it, got in there. Child support is what, fellas? Children's medical insurance. That's all the fuck it is. Nothing more, nothing less. Real talk. We've been on here for an hour. We've been on here for an hour, fellas. You got to read these cases. Remember, read these cases. Right? Before you jump the gun. Read these cases. Don't be out here be like, oh, girl. She ain't calling these hoes out, but she quick to tell y'all child support is unconstitutional. And she got all them niggas over there. I need help. I need this with this. I need help. It ain't your child support unless you agree to it. It ain't your child support unless you agree to pay it. Now, if you agree to pay it, it's your case. We need to stop making this hard, fellas. This ain't hard. This shit is so easy. It's easy. It's so easy. It's like you stuck your dick in your baby mama and you had that baby. You shot your cum in there. You shot your children inside of her. That's how easy this shit is. Real talk. Because if this case was so cold, Holmberg versus Holmberg, niggas would be getting off of child support left and right. Freestone versus Blessing was overruled. Right? This ain't my website. This way, I'm going by what they say. Overruled by this case. It was in 2015. Let me pull it down some. That's what it says. Yeah. Well, yeah, fellas, I'm coming out with another podcast tomorrow. It might be the Rooker Feldman Doctrine or another case, child support case, case law. And uh, we're going to have fun. You know what I mean? Y'all have a good night. Peace. Yes, sir.